Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Number one, there is currently no known cause of Alice in Wonderland syndrome. There are, however, known triggers or associated conditions that you can look out for. Most commonly, migraines and epilepsy are associated with Alice in Wonderland syndrome, but there are several other triggers, including brain tumors, infections, cough medicine, and stress. Some researchers have hypothesized that the syndrome has something to do with the parietal lobes of the brain, but more research needs to be done. Number two, there are three main symptoms of Alice in Wonderland syndrome, micropsia, macropsia, and teleopsia. Micropsia involves the patient seeing objects around them as smaller than they actually are. Macropsia involves the patient seeing the same objects as much larger than they are. Teleopsia deals with a warped sense of distance. It's not uncommon for a child with this symptom to see their mother right next to them when she's on the other side of the room. There are other less common symptoms including a distorted sense of time or hearing. Some patients also have hallucinations which can lead to a distorted sense of reality. Number three. Episodes of Alice in Wonderland syndrome are most active at night. While symptoms can appear at any time, most commonly a person experiences them close to the time they generally go to bed. Number four, Alice in Wonderland syndrome is not dangerous. Very little about Alice in Wonderland syndrome deserves concern, and the most worrisome aspect is the fear or confusion a patient experiences before, during, or after episodes. With this in mind, diagnoses are useful in that they can assure a patient that he or she is not going crazy. Number five, Alice in Wonderland syndrome most commonly affects children. Although it can affect people at any age, the most common reports are of children and most of them grow out of it before adulthood. Number six, there is currently no treatment for Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Luckily, most cases naturally disappear over time, leaving the patient without syndrome related problems by the time he or she is a teenager. While some cases might continue into adulthood, most do not. Number seven, Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland, might have experienced Alice in Wonderland syndrome. According to his journals, he experienced severe migraines, which are a leading trigger of the condition. This could explain why Alice's experiences changing size in Wonderland so closely imitate what people actually feel when they have Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Number eight, very little research has been done on this condition. Because it's so rare and relatively harmless, very few studies have been done. That means that causes, treatments, or preventions could be discovered if sufficient studies were done. A lack of research can also lead to misdiagnosis, especially in cases where doctors aren't informed enough about Alice in Wonderland syndrome to even pronounce a diagnosis. Number nine, Alice in Wonderland syndrome has realistic symptoms. Most patients experiencing symptoms are aware that it's not real, just based off common logic. However, it's important to remember that these hallucinations feel 100% real and accurate to those experiencing them. Number 10, Alice in Wonderland syndrome has a twin condition, AWLS, or Alice in Wonderland-like syndrome. In this condition, most symptoms are almost exactly the same with only a few exceptions. This can make Alice in Wonderland syndrome hard to diagnose correctly. I hope you enjoyed that video. Have you had experiences with Alice in Wonderland syndrome? Let us know about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.